Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value for leases, specifically from the lessor's perspective. Remember, the lessor is the owner of the property. The lessor is the one that's renting the property, leasing the property to the lessee, who is the renter. Now, in the prior session, we looked at this same topic, however, from the lessee's perspective. Remember, the lessee is the renter is the person that's paying the money to use the property. So let's review. What is guaranteed residual value? It means the party is guaranteeing a specific amount, residual value for the asset at the end of the lease. So you lease the car, five years later, you'll return it. You are guaranteeing a value for this car, for the car dealership for 10,000. In other words, the car is worth $10,000 at the end of the lease. And if you're guaranteeing that 10,000, well, if that 10,000 is not there in value, you have to come up with the money. This is if, if it's guaranteed. If it's unguaranteed, you don't have to do anything about it. Now, remember, this is a review from the prior session. For the lessee, include the residual value in the lease liability only if guaranteed. So from a lessee's perspective, remember the lessee will have what? The lessee will have a, a liability. Why? because the lessee will have a loan, basically a liability. They will include this residual value only, notice only, if guaranteed, so it has to be guaranteed, and plus the expected value is less than the guaranteed amount. So it, we would only include if it's guaranteed and that the expected value of the guarantee, let's go back to the 10,000, if you are guaranteeing the value of the car for 10,000 and the value of the car is 12, you don't include this present value computation. But if you're guaranteeing the car is eight and the value is expected to be seven, you are $3,000 short. You have to include the present value of this $3,000 in the computation. Now, so include the residual value for the lessor now, include the residual value in the computation of the lease receivable. Remember, the lessor will have a lease receivable. So when we compute the lease receivable for the lessor, we would always, 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 always include the residual value, whether it's guaranteed or unguaranteed. Well, what does that mean? It means it doesn't matter. Yes, it matters. We're going to have a small twist at the commencement of the lease. And this is also what we need to learn. So the first thing you need to know is this. You would always include the residual value for the lessor whether the residual value is guaranteed or not when computing lease receivable. However, we're going to have a small twist when it comes to recording the sale, and we will see the difference between whether it's guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value. But let's talk about what is the residual value to the lessor. Let's think about this concept because it's it, you, we have to understand why we treat it a little differently with that small twist, why we have that twist. Well, think about it. If the amount is guaranteed, if the lessee guaranteed the amount, well, it is as if the lessor sold the asset res residual value. So if it's guaranteed, I'm either going to get the money. If Let's assume a, a car dealership, Ford Motor Company, leased the car and the, the, the lessee, the person that, that leased the car, guaranteed the value of 10000 Well, if the person ret returned the car and the car is all beat up, they still have to pay 10000 Why? Because it's guaranteed. It is for the lessor, it's as if they sold the that residual value. It's assured recovery. Why? Because they're going to either get the asset worth 10000 back and they can sell it if they want to, or they can get cash instead, cash in lieu. So technically, they sold the residual value. So the recovery is assured. Therefore, here's what's going to happen. We're going to increase, again, the residual value in the receivable. Of course, we do that. I told you about this. But the residual value would also be included in the sale amount. And this is important. So if it's guaranteed, it's going to be included in the sale amount. Always be included in the receivable. What if the residual value is unguaranteed? Let's think about this. If it's unguaranteed, the dealer, the dealer, Ford Motor Company, cannot it cannot be assured that the residual value will be back to them. They, they, they're not. They're not assured of the recovery because the, the person that purchased the car, the lessee, doesn't guarantee anything. So therefore, there is no sale of the residual value. What does that mean? It means we're going to reduce the sales and cost of goods sold by the present value of the residual value. And this is where the twist takes place. In other words, the receivable, the lease receivable, is the same whether it's guaranteed or not. The lease receivable, the, re, the lease 
receivable will be the same. What's going to be different is the sale amount, the sale amount and cost of goods sold. Now you're saying, come on, give me an example. No worries, we're going to work example working both cases, a comprehensive example to show you how this works from the lessor's perspective. Now, if you are watching, that's great. You are looking for some help. This is how you end up here watching my recording. You are, you are either an accounting student or a CPA candidate. In both situations, I advise you to go a step further. Go to farhatlectures.com. Subscribe. I have lectures, multiple choice, true, false, exercises, resources that's going to help you with your accounting courses as well as your CPA review course. I can help you understand the material differently which in turn will help you do better in your classes, will help you do better in your CPA exam. Invest in yourself. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. If you're watching, you're liking it. Please like it. Share it. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's review what we just said. Least receivable equal to the present value of the payment received plus the present value of the residual value, regardless whether that residual value is guaranteed or not guaranteed, unguaranteed. So this is always the case. This is what le least receivable is. So the best way is to start an example illustrating, illustrating both. We're going to work the same example that we work when we looked at the finance lease from the lessee and the lessor's perspective. Assume Boeing, Boeing Capital Corp, a subsidiary of Boeing, and Delta Airlines signs a lease agreement dated January 1st that called for Boeing to lease a mobile airplane ladder, which is a ladder, to Delta beginning January 1st, X1. Here's the details of the lease. The term of the lease is five years, non-cancellable, requiring equal payments of 20000 and we're going to compute the payment anyway, annuity due basis, which is the first payment means be paid on January 1st, X1. The fair value of the ladder is 95000 with an estimated economic life of five years. The expected residual value after five years is 2960 For the purpose of this example, we're going to assume it's a guaranteed residual value. The ex the, there is no renewable option the, the ladder would revert back to Boeing at the termination of the lease. Delta's incremental borrowing rate is 5%. Boeing sets an annual rate to earn 4%, and that is known. So we know how much Boeing is earning, therefore we're going to be using the 4%. Collectability of payment is assured, uh, so that's good. It means we're going to get the money. Simply put, this is a finance lease. We already talked about this. The question is, how do we compute? And the cost of the ladder for Boeing is 80,000. That's giving. That's also a giving figure. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to compute the payment. Although it's giving, it's just a good review. How do you compute the payment? You take the fair value of the leased asset, leased equipment, minus the present value of the residual value, which is 2,960 times 0.82193, the factors, and that's going to give us the present value of $2,405. Amount to be recovered is this much, 92,595 will take 92,595 divided by the present value of an of an annuity due and n equal to 5 i equal to 4 the same thing here n equal to 5 i equal to 4 percent and we come up with the payment of 20,000 now the least receivable equal to the 95,000 which is the present value of the payments which is right here the present value of the payment plus the present value of the residual value together will give us 95,000. Therefore, we debit least receivable 95,000. We credit sales revenue 95,000. Now, why did we do so? So what we did in the sales, so this $95,000 here, it included the present value of the payments plus the present value of the guaranteed residual value. Why did we do that? Because we assumed in this example, the amount of residual value is guaranteed. This is what we're working. So once we work the unguaranteed, you will see the difference. Then we debit cost of goods sold 80 and credit inventory 80,000. This is the entry. Now what's going to happen next is we're going to build an amortization schedule. And this is what we did in the prior session. This is the amortization schedule. The lease receivable is 95,000 and we go through the payments. I'm not going to go over this schedule because I did go over, I did go over this schedule in the prior session, but real quick, I'm going to go over one entry, um, real quick. <laughs> the first payment 20,000 would reduce the receivable to 75 because we received it on the same date. The second payment, what's going to happen, it's going to be split between interest revenue and reduction of the receivable, the, reduc the receivable becomes 58, and those are the journal entries, so on and so forth. So again, if you're looking at this 
page and saying, what, what, why, why doesn't he go over it? Because I did go over it before. The point I'm trying to make here is the residual values included in the table. And this is for the guaranteed for the guaranteed residual value. And let me tell you, for the unguaranteed residual value, it's also going to be included, okay? But let's see what, what's going to be the difference, okay? Now, so this is for guaranteed. Now, let's switch the example. And the only thing I'm going to switch in the example, I'm going to assume that this residual value, 29, 26, is unguaranteed. Now, how would the lessor deal with this unguaranteed residual value? This is, this is what we're trying to do, to see the difference between the two. Well, here's what's going to happen. The payment is the same. We compute the payment the same. The least receivable is the same. This is exactly what we did. The least receivable is the same. What's going to what's going to be difference is this. The least receivable will be 95,000. Sales will be 92,595. So why is sales 92,595? Well, because what we do is we cannot record the whole sales because the 95,000 represent the present value of the payment received plus the present value of the residual value. Here we cannot assume we're going to get that present the the guaranteed residual value therefore we deduct 2405 therefore our sales will be 92595 then we debit cost of goods sold by 77595 where did this number came from the cost of goods sold is giving us 80000 we reduce it by the present value of the residual value and inventory credited is 80000 if you add the debits and the credits they should equal to each others so what is the difference between this entry and the prior entry? Well, let's think about this. Here's the prior entry. I just showed you the prior entry. Let me highlight it, box it in a different color. This is the entry when the residual value was guaranteed. Sales was 90, cost of goods sold was 80. So if we take, I'm sorry, sales was 95. So if we take 95 minus 80, we'll get to the profit of 15,000. Now, let me put this in a different color. When the residual value is unguaranteed, what did I tell you? I told you that we're going to reduce we're going to reduce the sale by the present value, which is it becomes 92,595 and cost of goods sold 77,595. If we take those two numbers and we'll find the difference, the profit also 15,000. So notice in uh, in both situation in both situation in both situation it is the same. It is the same. The profit is 15,000. The only difference, what's the only difference? The only difference is they are, they are, the sales and the cost of goods sold are two different figures. That's the only difference. Now, when it comes to the amortization schedule, it's the same amortization schedule, starting with 95 and we have the residual value. However, when it comes, when we go to the income statement presentation, sales revenue is 92,595, cost of goods sold is 77,595, which will give you still a profit of 15. However, under the guaranteed, you book one, you book 95,000 of sales, the, the gross amount, and 80 of cost of goods sold, which also gave you an amount of 15. So that's the difference between the two. The point to remember, guaranteed residual value is included in the amortization schedule for both. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work, multiple choice, through false exercises. That's gonna help you do better on your exam. Don't shortchange yourself. This is important. This is important. Invest in yourself, invest in your career. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.